Imagine a circle. Imagine 12 points on that circle. You unlock this circle with the keys of your imagination. Beyond is another dimension. A dimension of sound, of emotion, of, of, of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of feelings and ideas. You've just waded into the sonic deep. deep. We hope you enjoy your stay. Here's your host, Mr. And Lou. And I am Mr. Ann Lou, your host, and I am joined by the infamous Alex Sioris. Alex, how are you today? Very, very, very well, Jason. Thank you. Very good. We're here to talk more about ecometry, uh, the study of the measure of sound, uh, and how it relates to our brain. Um, so, let's talk music. Where do you want to dive in at? I'm, 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 I want to go here, but you tell me where you want to start. I tell you what, uh, like always, we're going to jump right into it. Great, great. Because the sound is a beautiful place to, to take a nice, uh, a dive, yeah, yeah, you know, have a swim. So um, I like to welcome once again, everybody. And I like to tell you that last, uh, last show we were talking about, uh, how the sound impresses our mind. I did mention um, for the first time what major and minor means for the human brain, other than those uh, happy stories that you hear in the schools that, oh, you know, when you're happy, it's major. When you're sad, it's minor. No, it's actually specifically designed. And uh, we talked about how the three times four and the four times three and the three, four, five and the four, three, five are really the identities of what we hear in the course of our musical experience. So quick, I'm gonna give you an example. I was telling you that this beautiful thing sounds melancholic for a reason. This thing sounds a little bit happier for a specific reason. The reason being that a minor chord, it's made out of a symmetric sequential sound pattern, which is designed with the three numbers, three, plus four, plus five. Three plus four, seven, plus five, 12, gives a sequence in the brain. The brain receives the sequence and says, I'm sad. While the major is four, three, five. Has no sequence. It's minus one plus two versus plus one plus one. And we mentioned that diminished and augmented are four times three or three times four. The brain instantly gets offended and says, you must be kidding. You want me to calculate this simple thing and lose interest. What we didn't talk about last week, which I'm going to drop in right now, we didn't talk about the, what you call guys, flat five. That flat five is nothing but cutting the sound in half. So when you cut something in half, the mind gets really offended. So every time you hear this, this kind of lines, So when you do, now this is what the mind minds, and you all call it the blue note. I like to remind you that if you ever went to school, they're going to design it. Uh, the name they give in the school is the devil's note, and I take offense for that because we should leave the devil out of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to do today, very quick, I'd like to show you what the sound really looks like. If you had to see the sound, what, what it would look like. And remember, uh, we've been making fun of the word octave, and we said that the octave is really the number 12 in disguise. Right. The disguise is really because you went to school for it. If you didn't go to school, you find out that the sound is actually 12 consecutive Phonese, and we call them, sadly, a chromatic scale. I call it 12. Let's get over it and let's get with it. So I'd like to show you what an octave looks like uh, on, on a piece of paper or say, let's say a little design that I have out here for you. And I'd like to see if we can uh, get a little bit of a better picture on this uh, beautiful thing here. Uh, we call it hijos. So here we go. There is the lowest octave on your piano, the lowest dozen on the piano, would sound pretty much like this. If 
if you want to number 13. But this could make. Now, when you go one octave higher, half of the diameter of this thing will be the next octave. The division of the larger octave by half and the next octave by half, and again by half and by half and by half, as you notice at the end, we end up being with a tiny little dot, is what in, uh, in the musical um, educational system they call it the different octaves. How are you going up an octave? You're actually going to a smaller size. How do you go down an octave? You're going to a bigger size. I would like to point out that the middle C that everybody talks about happens to live in this particular octave. And as you notice, it does uh, almost, it locates itself in the middle, right? Huh. Now, as you notice, dividing something by half cannot exceed the number seven. And that's why the number seven in music is very, very important. I'd like to point out to you and this is going to find you. I would like, to, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I would like yeah. to point, exactly, yeah, and maybe you should do yeah. that. Yeah. So Jason is going to show you that nature has it. Maybe you can go a little bit, you can, yes. Nature has it that when, if you notice, this is a shell. In Greek, we call it cochleas. Cochleas is also cochlea, is also the name we have for the inside of our ear. If you notice, cochlea has seven compartments. They all have the relationship of two to one as you're going smaller or bigger. The biggest is divided seven times before the cochlea runs out of space. It runs out of room. So I, this way I'm trying to point out to you what it is that we call music. It's actually a specific phenomenon that has to deal with the number seven. Seven are the octaves, and seven are the compartments of our logic when it comes to music. We don't exceed seven. There is no eighth octave we can hear. Right. So, also this poor little creature here cannot go to an eighth department. It lives in seven departments. And I would like to point out that this is not a coincidence, as we will find out soon. So now that we saw uh, this beautiful uh, picture here, I'd like to tell you that this is ichos. Ichos, remember, it means sound in Greek. Ichos. So when you, if we manage to measure the ichos, we become echometrists. And that's what echometry has to do, is about measuring the ichos. So now, no more excuses for not knowing what echometria, echometry means. Now, the next thing I'm going to bring up is a beautiful picture of... Oh, it's okay. We called this dissonance. And the first thing we did when we talk about music, I pointed out to everybody that unless you know what dissonance is, you'll never really know what good music is. So welcome to the world of this. Would you, would you want me to lift it up a little? No, 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 we're good. Huh? Okay, very good. And here we go. Again, and rather quick, because we already talked about this. I just didn't have this particular device with me last week. On the top, we have the number 12. The 12, as you see, the 12 dots are the notes. Can you see any similarities? Okay, you, you understand that this is any octave, how the mind understands it when it comes to music. It's divided by 12. If we were to consider that any of this is the beginning of any instrument, any song, any musical phrase, any lick, any, any way you call it, if you start anywhere and you play all the notes, it's what you call a chromatic playing. I call it consecutive phonesse, consecutive sounds. Now, you notice that it looks very symmetric. This is the number 12 divided by one. If you would like to see what 12 divided by 12 is, then it is the sound at the bottom. Sadly, I cannot get those apart. These are glued. This one is monotony. When you divide 12 by two, it brings six. One, two. 
five, six. This you call it the whole tone scale. When you divide 12 by 6, it brings 2. This is what you call the flat 5. This is what you call the devil's notes. Right here. The blue note is nothing but dividing the sound in half. When you divide the sound by 4, and the 4 happens to be right here, divide the sound by 4, it brings 3. 3 is your augmented chord. Divide the sound by 3, it brings 4. 4 is your fully diminished arpeggio. And as you see, behind those names and numbering systems, you can see now that music is absolutely geometrical. What I'm trying to point out, folks, is that everything that you see on this board is the exact presentation of dissonance. Whoever understands this board has already known what to avoid in music so it doesn't offend your ears and the ears of your listeners. So here we go with dissonance again. Now, if we take two of these, two fours put together, you create the octatonic jazz scale. If you take Two of these, and you just twist them a little bit, you create a jazz scale that's called six tone, one and a half, half, one and a half, half, one and a half, half. People who go to school probably heard that at least once in their musical education, but they don't give them any kind of description. So right. a commentary will give you the tools to actually see what you're learning. Now, I'm going to go quick over this thing. As you notice, this contains all the isosceles triangles you can create within the number 12. They are all dissonant. Starting from the longest one, the longest one you call it suspended. The next one over you call it augmented. The next one you call it diminished. And the last two you don't call them because you don't even know they exist. <laughs> Because they so, sound that horrible? Or? Yes. yes. I would like to point out about the parallelograms and the, and the trapezes that are even within 12. The last picture here presents the dissonance that has to do with four notes. As you notice, the, the kind of prevailing size is the full square. That is what you call fully diminished chord. It's the big blue square. Anyway, I'm not going to stay with so those this. So those are the full, the, that's the diminished uh, the tetraphony. Di it, it, tetra now, tetraphony can be, can be squeezed or it can be, it cannot be expanded past the number four. Right. Okay. Tetraphony is four. But you will notice that it, you, well, you can create a few different, uh, by the way, tetraphony is also in here. You can see it up here. Right. Okay, tetraphony is also up here. Now, because I know that this is a little bit complicated, we're going to go over it. I just wanted to show you that echometry has the tools to teach music with a logical and very precise manner and form. It is actually tutorable. Is that a good word? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can actually teach echometry. Now, the next thing we're going to do... And I, I want to just point out that... Yeah, go ahead and bring up what you're going to bring up. And I want to point out that what you just saw were the most pleasing types of things to your eye. But really, the because of the dissonance. symmetry, yes. they sound the worst. They're the worst. <clears throat> now, quick, I'm going to point out that 3 is dissonant. Half of a square is dissonant, and we call them augmented and diminished arpeggio. The minor is sad because it's partly dissonant. Why is it partly dissonant? Because, you, as you can see here, the minor has small, bigger, much bigger, three, four, five, major four, three, five. We did so this it has week. some symmetry in it. Okay, so that we can actually connect with last week i had to do this yes this indeed okay introduction and now that we did all that welcome to what music is when music is consonant and as you will find out now here we have a
bunch of beautiful toys that I'm going to sit down and try to describe for you. The major chord, when it is played from the top to the bottom, it sounds one, five, eight. This would be the major chord that on the guitar sounds like. Oh, Ever wanted to know how this really works? Don't worry about that. <laughs> yep. But, uh, all right, so the major no, chord on the, the major chord out there sounds like this. Okay, that is one, five, eight. Look what happens when this beautiful thing revolves and we're gonna play the same thing from a different point of view. We're playing one, four, nine. Once again, we're gonna revolve it to see here the last size of it. And this one, you'll find out it says one, six, 10. One five eight, one four nine, one six ten. This is the note. What I just did, I pointed out how we can make any note happy three ways those three triangles are here this is what the major triangle turns into when the mind understands all three parameters this is something that in schools they call it inversions when we go in the back of this beautiful object here you find out that the minor chord has the exact size but backwards and here you go you're going to hear the same thing in minors this is the first one this is the next one it's called one five ten and the next one is called one six nine again i'm going to sing it are here they're in the back of the major I know by looking at it you're not very impressed I know that you are also a little bit of confused sadly music is not easy and that's one of the reasons why the whole system has missed the fact that a major chord is actually three different things and you have to learn that before you buy your instruments because when you buy your instrument it's too late by then you're only going to find about the one of them yeah it sounds pretty okay now, since this was a little bit on the sad side and a little bit complicated, let me show you one more little toy that we have here. Let me tell you what a scale is. Uh, actually, Alex, before we go to that, uh, let's go ahead and take a break. Uh, we're coming right up on the break, so let's go ahead and take a break, and uh, then we'll come back and uh, see what else we have in store. <sighs> Ever wanted to know how music really works? Revolutionary musical scientist and mathematician Alex Sioris is breaking new ground with his incredible new insights into music and the way the brain thinks. With colors, shapes, and numbers, Alex has been able to unlock the secrets of music that traditional music theory has shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years. Learn the secrets of chord theory, scales, and so much more in this simple musical circle. Now you can get a glimpse of the commentary in the form of an easy-to-use musical cookbook on your 
iPhone. Visit iTunes App Store now and do a search for Ecometry or visit Ecometry.com. E-C-H-O-M-E-T-R-Y dot com. Ecometry, because music theory is a convoluted bitch. At Healthy You Herbs, we are an authorized new body distributor. We offer only 100% all-natural herbal products with no additives or preservatives at the lowest possible prices. We pride ourselves on providing the best products for your well-being and to ensure you have access to essential supplements vital to the human body. Visit us online at HealthyYouHerbs.com. Healthy You Herbs, your health depends on us. Seeking a home for your website and require managed services? What are managed services? If you need to make a change to your website but don't know how to do it, don't have a content management system installed, or don't understand how to use it, managed hosting is the way to go. With XMLA Managed Website Hosting, you just email us or give us a call and we will update your website for you. Packages start at only $24.95 per month, and it's only $5 for each additional gigabyte of space. And you can host and serve your site on a fast, reliable platform with complete control. Visit XMLA Post.com for complete information. And we are back. Uh, back with Alex Cyrus on the Sonic Deep. And we are discussing ecometry and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, we just discussed why uh, the major is major and the minor is minor. And now we're moving on. To scales, I believe, is what you wanted to talk about next. Is that correct? We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to give an example. Okay. What, uh, you know, what scale is. Uh, one, I'm going to what? One more little thing we're going to do. A here. scale. That's a, a ladder, right? Uh, yeah, we said that the ladder is not exactly what we use in our system. But the scale is 7 out of 12. Remember we mentioned last week that the, the mind is a very clever place. And it actually figures out things with the speed of light that are absolutely hard to detect unless you slow down your thoughts. So in order to understand music, we all have to slow down. And that's one of the things that echometry has for you. You can slow down as much as you want. Now, I was telling you that the seven is a very important number in the history of mankind. And as I was going through my books before I came here today, I found a very exciting little thing. Um, tell you what, maybe we'll find that in my... What did I do with it? Okay, okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. So we're saying that by picking five or seven, the mind goes, goes into... I, I, the, the anonymity of the seven or five creates what you're going to hear right now. This is the number five. Make it seven now. difference when the five are there sounds nice but when the seven comes in that sounds wow. nice too that sounds very nice now, as you see we're loading our mind with information that have five points of interest and then we load our brain with seven point of it points of interest, five squares to 25 bits of energy, seven squares to 49 bits of energy. We're overloading our brain with anonymous information. The brain loves it because 
by definition, we're made internally in our brain to understand any sound that occurs immediately because our mind does three things through the years. First, protects. Second, educates. And third, entertains. Guess what? Music is the number three. While our ears naturally are protected,